So I built a Voron 2.4 R2 350 millimeter printer. And honestly, I couldn't be happier with this machine. The freedom to print whatever materials I want, the speed of this printer, the accuracy, all of it is awesome, but it wasn't easy to get to this point. So should you, the viewer, build one yourself? Let's talk about that. <laughs> What is a Voron printer? Well, Vorons, like this printer here, doesn't actually come from a company called Voron. Instead, it's an open source project made by a lot of, honestly, very talented engineers. The Voron project has several different printer models that you can build yourself, uh, since they are all just plans. There isn't really a company out there you can buy a working printer from. Originally, these printers were all self-sourced, and they give you a list, as well as some good places to buy them, and you would just go and source all individual parts yourself, follow their plans, and build it. Uh, nowadays, you can find kits a lot, which is what I got here. This is the LDO kit from Matter Hackers. Just about all their printer designs use Core XY, which is a very fast way of moving around the toolhead. And you'll see it gaining more popularity as time goes on. In fact, it's actually in the very popular Bamboo X1 Carbon and the PIP. I wanted to get the 2.4 specifically because it is a Core XY system, but uses what's called a flying gantry. So the bed here doesn't move. Everything else moves, but the bed. And I thought that was a really interesting way of doing a 3D printer. So that was the one I went with. Uh, this specifically is the LDO kit. If you're not familiar with LDO, LDO makes stepper motors. So you would assume that a kit made by them is pretty good. And quite frankly, it is very good. It was very easy to build. I was already in the market for a new 3D printer. So when I saw the LDO kit available for Matter Hackers, I went ahead and bought it. I ordered a Voron 2.4 R2 350 millimeter size, that's the size of the bed, printer. I also went ahead and ordered the 3D printed parts for Matter Hackers, which turned out to be a bit of a headache, but more on that later. With a big dent in my wallet, I had my new 3D printer kit. And now when I say this is a kit, I really mean it. It was like several hundred parts. It required a 293 page manual to build it, but I was ready for the challenge, so I dove right into it. I'm not gonna describe every step of building this printer. You can find plenty of that all over YouTube, but I will kind of go through the process real quick as I went through it myself. about the 3D printed parts before? Overall, the 3D printed parts from Matter Hackers were of excellent quality. I was very happy with them, but the problem I alluded to before is that they sent me some of the wrong parts. Some of it was just straight up wrong, and some of it was right for a different kit. This is the LDO Voron 2.4 R2 Rev-C kit. <laughs> very specific. The RevC kit includes parts specifically for the new Stealth Burner toolhead. What Matter Hackers sent me were parts for the Afterburner toolhead. This meant I didn't have the correct 3D printed parts to build the toolhead. And that means I couldn't print with it. So even though these parts were supposed to be the essential parts, it hasn't enough to get you up and printing, it only got me as far as attaching the gantry. So the keen eyed among you might already notice I have a 3D printer myself already. So why didn't I just print the parts myself instead of just buying them? I would have saved myself a lot of trouble, uh, but the reason is all the printed parts for this printer are printed on ABS filament. That's because they need to be able to stand higher heat 
because they're in an enclosed chamber and they print higher temperature filaments, things like that. I can't print it out of PLA and I have never printed ABS before. So I decided to skip the headache of noxious fumes and a difficult warping mess of a filament and just buy the parts. After a I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed email, I went ahead and built a cardboard enclosure around the Ender 3 Max and dove head into what I thought would be a nightmare. However, I was pleasantly surprised. ABS actually prints pretty well on this machine. It turns out all that time and money I spent upgrading the machine was not in vain. This thing was spitting out parts with fairly high quality without very much tuning at all. Super surprising, but my progress still slowed down a lot from here because I was waiting for each print to complete before I could continue on with the project. But then, what is this? A response from Matter Hackers. <laughs> Turns out it is a mistake on their part to be sending the 3D printed parts for the older revision kit from LDO. So they actually rect rectified it really quickly. They got back to me within the same week and I even had the parts the day after they sent out the email. So that was awesome. So moving forward, it seems that Matter Hackers is going to include the correct 3D printed parts for this LDO kit. So if you order their parts, you may, may receive the correct parts. Hopefully, I can't promise anything. I should say there is another option and one I should have probably gone with before. If you go ahead and join the Voron Discord, there is the Print It Forward program where somebody who is uh, authorized in the community or approved of in the community that can print high quality parts can go ahead and print all the parts for you and typically a couple different requested colors. I think you pay them somewhere in the neighborhood of $100, similar to what I paid on Matter Hackers. I mean, you're going through a specific person, so shipping's probably longer. You probably have to wait a little bit longer, but it is a surefire way to receive high quality parts. In general, it's also just a good community to join. You should join the Voron Discord. It's a good place to ask questions and learn. At this point, I had already printed and built the extruder. So I got a little gray mixed in there, but you know what? This is my printer. I can make it exactly how I want. And that's a big part of Voron printers. My intention this whole time was to use this gray filament to kind of add uh, some other color to this red and black scheme I got going on. So all the skirts, all the clips are printed in gray filament. That's the great part about a Voron. It's customizable any way that I want it to be. Nevertheless, I had all the parts to get it set up so I could just go ahead and start printing, right? Nope, there was a lot ahead of me. This printer runs a specialized firmware known as Clipper. Clipper is interesting because it runs on a Raspberry Pi and not actually on the printer mainboard itself like other printers do. This means, however, the printer is a lot faster at computing things and overall just has a lot more uh, computational oomph, you know? Can really think hard. It's a good thinking printer. <laughs> However, this 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 is cool because I can do things like input shaping, I can do things like pressure advance, and I can change tons of different settings on the fly really easily. And setting up Clipper for the Voron really isn't that hard. There's plenty of documentation on how to do this. I'm very familiar with Clipper already because of the mods I've done to this printer, so it wasn't too hard just to download the LDO config, put it in uh, the printer.cfg file, boot it up, everything was working. But what would be the next big step? I still live in 2016, so on my Ender 3 Max, I use Simplify 3D, the old version. I didn't pay the $60 or $100 or whatever to get the new Simplify 3D 5.0. No, 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 no. I paid $200 for that software in 2016, and I refuse to allow any free software to be better than that, even though they are. Today was the day I changed my mind. I looking through the discord looking through reddit it seems that people like to use something called super slicer for their slicer super slicer is an offshoot of prusa slicer and prusa slicer is an offshoot of slick 3r <laughs> but super slicer is more specifically geared towards vorons uh, and there's tons of profiles and suggestions and a lot of support for voron specifically with that slicer so that's what i used i went to the github and downloaded it Whoops. I downloaded Super Slicer from the GitHub and used the default profile. I went ahead and sliced it and tried to get it printing. Just kidding, quad gantry level wasn't working. Why wasn't it working? Because the inductive probe sucks. 
One of the first upgrades I did was actually the clicky probe. That's a whole different story. Uh, but once I figured out that issue, then I got it started printing. Just kidding. The extruder was running backwards and it spit the filament out instead of printing. Okay, after, so third time's a charm, I did get it printing. The first print came out a little eh. Dimensions were perfect, like within one hundredth of a millimeter, but it was a little like wavy. <laughs> Turns out I was a little too excited to get it set up, so I didn't actually PID tune the hot end and it just used the, the values that were in the config file. Uh, so that was a mistake on my part. So it was fluctuating temperature and made it a little bit bumpy <laughs> on the outside. But after doing that, it prints, but it doesn't print very fast. Not every Voron is exactly the same. So you can't just download somebody else's settings and start from there. Uh, but there is like the printer profiles in Slicer softwares. The thing is that they, those tend to be kind of slow. And so you're gonna wanna tune it yourself. And luckily there's a great guide I found. It's Ellis's tuning guide. I'm gonna link it in the description. It can actually work for any printer. It does revolve around the Voron, but it is just good steps and good habits and good advice on tuning the different parameters of your slicing software. So definitely a good read. Recommend looking at it if you're 3D printing at all. So after using Alice's tuning guide, I got things tuned pretty well. I set up pressure advance for the filament I was using. I set up input shaping using the input shaper kit that came with the LDO kit. But after going through that entire process, printer is printing, decently tuned, plenty of steps I can improve on over time and I will even from this point. So from here on out, it was really just printing the final pieces uh, like the skirts, the screen holder, the, the panel clips, all that stuff for the printer and getting it set up. And that gets us to here we are. All the parts are assembled and I'm super happy with this printer. So to repeat myself, I love this printer. I'm really getting great prints about two to three times faster than my Creality Ender 3 Max. And I also like the ability of printing with more exotic filaments. You know, I've already printed some ASA, I've printed some ABS, I'm gonna try out, I have TPU. Uh, I wanna print some, some nylon. I'll have to get a different sheet, but uh, some nylon, carbon fiber nylon, maybe polycarbonate. Lots of different things that I can try now that I have the enclosure. I have the filter made, I haven't installed it, but there's a filter to help with the fumes, all that stuff. So now I have something really capable in my home. But should you build one yourself? Maybe, you know, it's a great printer, but you could go out and buy the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon for about the same price. And that printer, you basically just bring it home, plug it in, and it's good to go. This printer took me about three days to build it. And that was something I personally enjoyed. If you don't enjoy that sort of thing, if you don't enjoy tinkering, then this is not the printer for you. But if you want to get to know your printer in and out, if you want to be able to customize things as well, this is all open source, then go with the Voron. So the answer to the question of should you build a Voron really is maybe. I would still recommend this specific LDO kit from Matter Hackers to anyone who wants to build a Voron. Uh, if you want to buy the parts from them, do so at your own discretion. Things should be better now, uh, but there also is other options. And with that, thanks for watching. By the way, if you're wondering why I got a printer with a bed so big, feel free to hit that subscribe button and you will find out very soon.